Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to review another Halloween movie for this Halloween season and it is Jeepers Creepers 3. And it is a movie that I have been really quite highly anticipated. I'm a big fan of the first movie, I really like that and I've actually done a classic movie review for that movie on my channel. I thought the second movie was okay as a sequel, it didn't do too badly but it wasn't anything as good as the first one. But leading up to this, the buzz around this movie and the trailers and some early reviews that I've seen uh, have all been really quite positive, so I've been quite excited to see this movie. However, after, say, after seeing it, I do have to say that I feel a little bit disappointed with the movie. In fact, I'm more than a little bit disappointed. I feel a bit let down with it. Um, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, and in actual fact, in some places, it's a bit of a mess. But we'll talk about it a bit more in depth what we get here in this movie at the beginning is we've got um stan shaw's character and it mainly focuses on stan shaw's character meg foster's character they are it follows directly on from the first jeepers creepers um, the night of the police attack you know where the creeper attacks in the police cell and takes the kid off and spoiler alert takes his eyes and the sister's left alone um, it immediately follows that attack at the police station and Stan Shaw and his crew turn up and they've got obviously got knowledge of this creeper. Um, the police there haven't got a clue what's going on. The creeper's truck's there and it's some, somehow now turned into some kind of killing machine. It's got booby traps all over the place in it. Um, and Stan Shaw is trying to recruit some of the police there. Everybody on Stan Shaw's crew has got some kind of connection to the creeper it's killed somebody close to them at some point in their lives and they're fully committed to taking this creeper down so there Stan Shaw and his crew's there it's all a bit chaotic and then we meet Meg Foster's character who we learn that her son was killed 23 years ago um, and she's basically, basically having visions of her son um, there's something buried on her land that the son in the visions keeps telling her that the creeper is going to come back and claim it and if she's still there it's going to kill her and uh, it's already a bit of a mess isn't it um her granddaughter lives there with her she's got a horse and they go up to collect some hay and the creepers there i mean to be honest the story is a complete mess I, I don't even think i can recount the story to you because it's all over the place it literally is it just feel like this movie exists for the creeper to kill people literally everybody that you can see is cannon fodder dead men walking basically there's the there's the nasty teenager it's got all the cliches the nasty teenager that as soon as you see him you think i hope you get it um there's people hiding under cars in broad daylight because it's like the creeper he, he must have some kind of transporter thing like star trek because he's all over the valley at the blink of an eye there's people hiding under trucks because he's attacking in broad daylight which he never really used to do not that i can remember anyway not to the degree that he was in this movie um so i just feel like this story was so poorly written it didn't know what it was doing it was so desperate at times to tie into the lore of the Creeper and the other movies that it forgot to be a movie of its own, tell its own story. And that was the biggest problem for me. I just couldn't follow what was going on. You know, this item that they were digging up uh, that uh, was on this land that the Creeper was so desperate to get back and claim. It was like it was just it was like this hand that was alive. And I'm thinking, well, what's so important about this hand? Nothing really. I mean, the creeper was still cool. A lot of the kills were pretty cool. Um, all that kind of stuff's great. If you just want to turn your brain off and, and have an hour and a half of, you know, watching the creeper kill people fairly tamely, it has to be said this time, then you'll have a good time with this movie. I just feel like, to say that it's, it's the same director and writer of the first two movies, I think he's lost his direction with this franchise now. Um... And it's almost like the rules that he set himself in the first movie and the second movie are strangling him in this third movie. Um, but it's fun to watch. It's a decent movie. Um, I think it's I think it's tamer than the other ones, but you know that's debatable, I suppose. I just feel a bit disappointed with it, but it's certainly not the worst 
film I've seen this year, I just think it's a bit of a letdown for fans.